today back then. What happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. I usually don't go back this far, but according to scholars, on this day in 1387 would have been when Geoffrey Chaucer's characters from his story Canterbury Tales began their pilgrimage to Canterbury. And since I'm way back here, in 1492, Christopher Columbus signs a contract with the Spanish monarchs to find the Indies with the goal of converting people to Catholicism. I think you know the rest of the story, at least parts of it. In 1711, Charles VI becomes Holy Roman Emperor after the death of his brother, Joseph I. In 1758, Francis Williams, the first black college graduate in the United States, publishes his poems. In 1790, Benjamin Franklin passes away today. In 1797, Verona, Italy began an eight-day rebellion against the French occupying forces, which ends unsuccessfully. In 1808, the Bayonne Decree by Napoleon I of France orders the seizure of U.S. ships. In 1853, the U.S. Marine Hospital at the Presidio in San Francisco is created. In 1861, Virginia secedes from the Union during the U.S. Civil War. In 1865, Mary Surratt is arrested as a conspirator in U.S. President Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Did you know there was a woman involved? In 1869, what is acknowledged as the first professional baseball game is played in Cincinnati. In 1892, today the first professional baseball game on a Sunday is played. In 1895, the Treaty of Shimonosekai between China and Japan is signed, ending the First Sino-Japanese War. In 1905, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that setting a maximum workday is unconstitutional according to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. In 1907, the Ellis Island Immigration Center processes 11,747 people, more than on any other day ever. In 1912, Russian troops open fire on striking goldfield workers in Siberia, killing at least 150 people. Also in 1912, today Al Jolson's Ragging the Baby to Sleep would have become the first ever gold record if Billboard had existed. In 1924, Metro Pictures, Goldwyn Pictures, and Louis B. Mayer Company merged to form Metro Goldwyn Mayer, or MGM. In 1932, Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie ends slavery in his country. In 1933, the Chicago Bears win their first ever NFL game by beating the New York Giants 23-21. In 1934, the new Fenway Park opens today. In 1945, Brazilian forces liberate the town of Montese, Italy from German Nazi forces. In 1947, Jackie Robinson gets his first major league hit. But don't get too excited, it was a bunt. In 1949, at midnight, 26 Irish counties officially leave the British Commonwealth, beginning the Republic of Ireland. In 1951, the Peak District becomes the United Kingdom's first national park. Also in 1951, American baseball great Mickey Mantle made his MLB debut as an outfielder for the New York Yankees. He went one for four. However, today in 1953, he hit a 565-foot or 172-meter home run in Washington, D.C.'s Griffith Stadium. What a shot. In 1956, the great Willie Moscone sinks 150 consecutive balls in a billiard tournament. In 1961, Cuban forces repelled the Bay of Pigs invasion, which was led by recent Cuban exiles and financed by the U.S. government. Also in 1961, at the 33rd Academy Awards, Apartment wins Best Film, while Burt Lancaster and Elizabeth Taylor win for acting, and Jimmy Stewart accepts an honorary Oscar on behalf of his friend Gary Cooper, who is too ill to attend. In 1964, Ford Motor Company introduces their iconic Mustang. Also in 1964, the New York Mets lose to the Pittsburgh Pirates 4-3 in the first game at Shea Stadium. In 1967, Surveyor 3 is launched and successfully lands on the moon April 20th. In 1968, the A's play the first game in Oakland Alameda Stadium, but lose 4-1 to the Baltimore 
Orioles. In 1969, Sirhan Sirhan is convicted of assassinating Robert F. Kennedy. Also in 1969, in San Francisco, the band performed their first concert. In 1970, the Apollo 13 command module re-entered Earth's atmosphere and splashed down, ending one of the most tense chapters in American history. Also in 1970, Paul McCartney releases his first solo album. It is called McCartney. In 1974, Victoria Beckham is born today. We used to call her Posh Spice. Also in 1974, Ted Bundy victim Susan Rancourt disappears from CWU in Ellensburg, Washington. In 1975, Phnom Penh falls to the Khmer Rouge, effectively making Pol Pot the dictator. In 1976, in one of baseball's greatest comebacks, the Philadelphia Phillies were trailing the Chicago Cubs 12-1, but end up winning the game 18-16 in 10 innings at Wrigley Field. In 1977, I Love My Wife opens at the Barrymore Theater in New York City for 864 performances. In 1978, Carl Sagan wins the Pulitzer Prize for Dragons of Eden. In 1981, the movie Caveman, starring Ringo Starr, Shelley Long, Barbara Bach, Dennis Quaid, Jack Guilford, and John Matuzak premieres. And that's all I have to say about that movie. In 1982, the Canada Act went into effect today, making Canada fully independent from Great Britain. Yes, that was just in 1982. In 1983, Nolan Ryan strikes out his 3,500th batter. In 1986, the 335-year war between the Netherlands and the Isles of Scilly ends today without a shot being fired. I guess they just forgot. Also in 1986, the Pulitzer Prize is awarded to Larry McMurtry for Lonesome Dove. In 1990, a gas explosion on a passenger train in Kumrahar, India, kills 80 people. In 1997, heart patient John Bell receives a new pacemaker, saving his life. John was 115 years old when this happened. In 1999, at the Rock for the Rainforest Benefit concert, performers included, well, guess, Sting and Elton John, yep, as well as James Taylor, Billy Joel, Tony Bennett, Don Henley, and Ricky Martin. In 2002, four Canadian soldiers are killed in Afghanistan by friendly fire from two United States Air Force F-16s. In 2003, Anela Yatinmaki was sworn in as Prime Minister of Finland, making them only the second country to have a woman as head of both state and government. New Zealand was first. In 2005, at the 51st British Academy Television Awards, Little Britain wins Best Comedy and Sex Traffic wins Best Drama. In 2006, a Palestinian suicide bomber detonates an explosive device in Tel Aviv, killing 11 people and injuring 70. In 2011, the hugely popular TV show Game of Thrones, which was based on George R.R. R. Martin's fantasy book series A Song of Ice and Fire, debuted on HBO. Also in 2011, the movie Thor, directed by Kenneth Branagh and starring Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman, premieres in Sydney, Australia. In 2012, Europe's oldest intact book, the 8th century St. Cuthbert Gospel, is purchased by the British Library. In 2013, 15 people are killed and 100 are injured after a fertilizer plant explodes in Texas. Also in 2013, same-sex marriage is legalized in New Zealand. In 2014, this year's Rock for the Rainforest benefit concert performers include Sting, yep, Elton John, yep, James Taylor, yep, also Roseanne Cash, Vince Gill, Bruno Mars, and Jennifer Hudson. I wonder what they're going to do now that Elton has retired. In 2018, former U.S. First Lady Barbara Bush dies today at 92 years old. In 2019, the science journal Nature publishes research showing pigs' brains being partially brought back to life at Yale University. Uh-oh, here we go. Zombie pigs. Also in 2019, Beyonce releases a live album of her 2018 Coachella performance on the same day as her Netflix documentary Homecoming premieres. 
in 2019 as well at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, 10 babies with bubble boy disease are cured using a gene therapy made from HIV. That's amazing. In 2021, according to Johns Hopkins University, the global COVID-19 death toll passes 3 million. And lastly, also in 2021, today was the funeral of Great Britain's Prince Philip, husband to the Queen. Hey, thanks for watching this video and I'll thank you now in advance for watching the ones in front of you. I would appreciate it. Talk to you tomorrow.